this time there is no host. There are no eggs. There is only her womb and the creature inside. That is Ripley's gift to her. Hey guys, what is up? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and today we'll be exploring the newborn alien featured in Alien Resurrection, starring Winona Ryder, Brad Dourif, Ron Perlman, and Sigourney Weaver. The newborn alien was essentially a human xenomorph hybrid created aboard the USM Auriga, which was a highly classified military bioweapons research facility, emerging as a byproduct of cloning experiments conducted by scientists of the United Systems military who would use the DNA of the deceased Ellen Ripley. The creature was created by a unique queen that was granted a second reproductive cycle. Unlike all other xenomorph queens that were able to lay an endless supply of eggs that contained facehuggers, this queen was also able to give birth to a single creature that had grown inside of her womb. At first everything was normal, the queen laid her eggs, but then she started to change, she added a second cycle so. Unfortunately for the queen, once she had given birth to the alien, it didn't recognize her as its mother and destroyed her in a fit of rage before slowly approaching Ripley 8 and seeking her affection. While Ripley 8 was a clone of the original Ripley, her DNA was used in subsequent experiments to create a queen that all ended in catastrophe before the creation of Ripley 8. As a result of aggressive DNA splicing, the queen born of Ripley 8 carried the same ability to give birth using a womb, and once she had delivered the newborn, it was unable to recognize her as its mother, and since Ripley 8, who was technically his grandmother, had a similar humanoid structure to it, the creature immediately identified Ripley as its mother. While the xenomorph queens are considered to be the most powerful and ferocious xenomorph variants, the hybrid newborn was evidently much stronger than its mother, seen tearing her face off with a single swipe. At the same time, this was balanced by the fact that it didn't possess acidic blood like the rest of the xenomorph species, and Ripley 8, who had a mutated acid blood defense system. The newborn's physical appearance was far more humanoid than any other xenomorph, and as mentioned earlier, this was a result of its live birth that surpassed the traditional growth process from overmorph, facehugger, chestburster, the xenomorph. Bipedal in nature, the newborn was roughly twice the size of the average xenomorph warriors, and while it possessed an elongated skull, it was far shorter and more human in shape, fusing with the upper back. Its unique head also featured large black eyes, a nose, and human teeth that further differentiated it from its xenomorph cousins. None of the classic traits like the tail, inner jaw, or dorsal tubes were present, and the creature had sickly pale skin that was fleshy in both appearance and texture. In saying that, the novelization of Alien Resurrection did give the creature both a tail and an inner jaw that developed in response to its rapid maturation. Physical appearance aside, the most notable differences between the newborn and the xenomorphs was probably its apparent ability to perceive and experience emotions. I mean, during the course of its short life it displayed curiosity, rage and sorrow, as well as a strong love and reverence for Ripley 8, which it perceived as its mother. The creature was also timid and displayed a lack of understanding of the world and its surroundings, unlike the xenomorphs that were born with cunning and were able to use stealth to their advantage early on. Despite the creature's emotional capacity, the newborn was psychologically immature and childlike in its behavior, often greeting the aftermath of its violent acts with curiosity, frequently toying with the bloodied remains of those it had killed. To be fair, the creature had only lived for an hour after its birth before being destroyed, and was given no guidance with regards to morality, which begs the question, if Ripley 8 did not blow it into space, how much more human could it have become? Well, that's all for today, folks. Thanks to all of you guys who requested we explore the newborn featured in Alien Resurrection. I'm curious to hear what you guys think of the newborn alien and the potential it had of being more human, so please share your thoughts and ideas below. If there's any other stuff you'd like me to check out, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. 
Thanks for stopping by.